Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be a little bit different from the normal program, and I believe this video is long overdue. Today we're going to answer a ton of questions about what I use for filming and photographing during my videos and Instagram and everything in between. So I do have a bunch of gear that we're going to go through today. If this interests you, stick around. If not, get out of here and I'll see you in the next one. So let's get started. All right, everybody, so to get this started, I'm gonna start with my small camera bag that I usually bring with me because when I'm out filming camping videos, I don't bring all of this gear with me unless I'm really hardcore out on like a wildlife shoot, a camping video, a YouTube video, Instagram. Uh, if I'm doing everything all at once, then I'm gonna have like 60 to 70 pounds of just camera gear, which is very rare. So I wanna start with a small camera bag. I'll also mention that I'm shooting on the GoPro camera right now. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm gonna be going through all of my DSLR gear and my lenses. So the beginning of this video is gonna be on the GoPro, which is what I'm on right now. And I'll explain more about that further in the video. So let me start with this small bag here. Uh, this is just a generic kind of sling shoulder bag that I bring with me. It's got the sling there, side entry, front entry, top entry, all kinds of little entry points. What I wanna show with this mainly is how I will configure this bag when I'm out hiking, what I put in it and how I access things. But right now I'm just gonna show you what's in it today because today is a non-camping day. I'm out in the bus just kind of relaxing, doing some cleaning. I figure why not make this video for you guys. So in the top here, I've got a USB micro cable. I also have a USB-C cable. And right now that's actually it. It's pretty empty. I just got back on a camping trip. So all my stuff's kind of all over the place. I also keep a lens cleaning cloth handy. So that's what's up there. And like I said, I'm gonna show you how I configure this later on on an actual hiking scenario. Uh, so in here right now, I do have batteries and this is the killer. Batteries, batteries, batteries. You always have to have batteries. So in this little guy here, this is a little pod. It, uh, it's got three batteries in there for GoPro. Right now there's only two, but it's also a charging dock, which runs off USB-C cable. I then have one, two, and a third battery for my drone. We're gonna talk more about this, but here I do have a drone. Three batteries. I've got the drone controller right there. I then have a camera lens, which is in here. And the reason why this is separated from the rest, we'll talk about that in a little bit as well. And that is basically, that's all that I've got in here right now, guys. Uh, I do carry a spare microphone with me. I will mention that. So I got a spare microphone here with a dead cat or a wind muff on it. Uh, that's from Comica. I'll go through some of the brands as well. And realistically, I think that is basically it. I do have spare drone props. So I do have some propellers in here as well. I just don't know if I move them to my other camera bag or where they're at right now, as I did just get back from camping. So that's bag one. At the end of the video, I'm gonna configure this to show you what it looks like when I'm actually camping. So with that aside, let's move into the bigger camera bag, which is where all the goodies are at. All right, so moving over to the big boy, this is what I would typically carry on just kind of photography trips. If I'm going out driving for a sunset, uh, doing things, wildlife shoots, specific photography shoots, I'll bring this with me in my vehicle. That's typically the only time I bring it because this is a very heavy bag. It's loaded full of goodies. And realistically, when I go camping, I know what I need to film outdoor video. So I'll only bring little bits and pieces. So just keep that in mind. This is a low pro bag. I believe this is the 420 AW. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, it is an A all weather 420, but it's a tactical version. So I went with something that had a little bit of Molly on the outside. So if I am hiking a bit, I can attach things on there, camera gear, uh, just all kinds of little things. So on the outside of this, again, the dreaded battery game. So whole bunch of DSLR batteries and this is going to be a common theme in this video you guys are gonna you guys are gonna find out a lot of answers to questions that you guys and girls have been asking over the years of why I do things a certain way you'll learn that in this video 
So that side is batteries. This side, I don't think I keep anything. I just keep like a little water bottle holder that can strap to the outside of the Molly if I do choose to do that. Sometimes I'll put a very uh, small prime lens, so maybe an 85 mil or a 50 mil in that. And then I can grab it really fast on the outside of the bag. As far as the side entry portions, these do open. I only use it to gain access to my super telephoto lens for really, really long shots of wildlife. If I really need to grab it really fast, just reach in and grab it. Typically, I don't use it. This bag does have a hard shell on the top and it can be accessed through the top as well, where I already have a camera body rigged up with a medium telephoto lens, a 70 to 200. Uh, so that's kind of two access points that I would use quickly. Typically, I'm usually ahead of the game. I already have my stuff out and ready to go through the back entrance. So I'll show you guys a close up. I'm gonna try and give you guys like a top down view here so you can really see what's in the bag and how the bag is configured itself. And then I'll start pulling pieces out, laying it out on the table, talking about each piece, why I bought it, why I would use it, where I would use it and all that stuff. All right, so coming into the back portion of the backpack, got nice vented pads and all kinds of little comfort creatures back here. There is a rear entry. So I'm just gonna unzip all of this. And there's the name of it right there. So this is the Pro Tactic BP 450AW2. If anyone's wondering what bag this is, I did pick this up off of Amazon. It was not cheap, but it is necessary and it houses all the very expensive goodies part of what I do. So let's have a look. So right away, you guys can see that I've got two camera bodies, a bunch of lenses, some little odds and ends. I've got another microphone in here, which I might as well pull off to the side right now. Uh, super telephoto, all kinds of things. So I'm just gonna pull everything out one at a time, lay it down on the table, talk a little bit about it, and we'll take it from there. All right, so moving some of these batteries out of the way. Uh, let's just go right for the big boy. So first off, get them out of here. I've got my super telephoto lens. I went with Sigma for this because a Canon super telephoto lens, which I used to own and use in the past, a 600 mil is very, very large, very big sized lens. It's just, it's huge and it works really, really great. The optics are incredible. However, doing what I do now, traveling and hiking in distances and whatnot, it just, it's not practical. So I went with the Sigma 150 to 600 Sport. Uh, might as well take the lens hood off of here. So this is a rather large lens, big element on the front. Uh, it's not the fastest lens, so it is a, a 6.3, so it's a 5 to f6.3 variable. So meaning at 600 mil, it's going to be f6.3, which is not really a deal breaker for me because I shoot full frame, so I've got good, uh, good sensor size and just kind of controlling your ISO and all that stuff. And I know I'm probably talking a lot of camera stuff to people who don't know what I'm talking about, but perhaps you'll learn a little bit of that lingo in this video, maybe not. So it does have an aluminum lens shade, which I really like. It's super strong, nice and robust. Screws right on there. Uh, this is fully lockable. We've got custom features, two stage auto uh, optical stabilization. It's got the focus range, so we can go from 10 meters to infinity, 2.6 to 10 meters or full range focus. And auto focus on, off and override, which is always important. So this is a 150 to 600 millimeter lens. You guys could probably get the idea right there. It's not the most backpack friendly thing. However, if you want the shot, you get to pack the gear. So. This is one of those pieces of gear that uh, if you want to get the shot, you got to carry it. And that's before any tent or any stove or any camping gear. So let's just pop this in here just for a sec. Move this guy off to the side. So camera body, the main body that I'm using right now as of June, what is it? June 10th today, 2022. Uh, this is a Canon 60 Mark II. It does have the battery grip underneath of it. So that gives me access to carry two batteries. And there's that word again, batteries, uh, two batteries in there. And I will mention that, uh, on a trip, me going out filming an entire video, I only need two batteries and that's without the drone, without the GoPro. If I were to film an entire episode with just this camera body, I would need two batteries and I wouldn't have to recharge at all. That's how efficient I am with what I film. I film what I keep and I keep what I film. I don't film a bunch of gibberish in between. So this is a Canon 6D Mark II. The reason why I went with the Mark II 6D is 
the flip screen. So I love DSLRs. I'm a photographer and filmmaker by trade. It's what I do for a living. I love the very angle screen because I get a lot of low shots. I can twist the screen. I can see what I'm doing versus having to get down and look. It's just a game changer for me and I love having that. This camera is actually still wet as I got home this morning and it was pouring with rain. So it's still in the drying out process, which is a normal routine for me. So that's one camera body. I also have two. So I have another Canon 60 Mark II. Identical camera body, except no battery grip. So this is a little bit smaller. If I want to go out and just carry a smaller camera body, I'll leave the battery grip home. However, I am going to have to switch batteries in between. It is paired up with a Sigma 70 to 200 f 2.8. This is a beautiful lens. Absolutely beautiful. I find myself using this quite often on certain trips, certain locations, certain fields. Uh, we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Moving on, I do have my Canon 50mm f1.4. So this is a pretty standard prime lens that I think everybody should have. And this is the workhorse of Lone Wolf 902. This guy right here. Talk more about that in a little bit as well. Down here, I have the, the cheaper version. I've got the 50 f1.8. Uh, this guy has taken a few dunks in the ocean, in the rivers, in the lakes. That's why I keep it for those risky shots. You're just not sure. I'd much rather lose a $200 lens than a five or $600 lens or a $2,500 lens. And you guys kind of get the drift there. So prime lenses coming into another prime. I do have a Sigma 20 millimeter lens. This is an F 1.4, absolutely beautiful lens, super smooth, good build quality, very heavy. Very heavy. All this gear is extremely heavy. This one lens here, I want to say is like two and a half pounds. It's a good chunk of glass and it is beautiful. This is the art version of that, by the way. And then coming over here, which is the second workhorse of the channel, is my Tamron. So this is a Tamron 15 to 30 mil. Uh, I did not expect to fall in love with this lens as much as I did. I actually love it. Incredible, incredible lens. I'm not a zoom guy. I'm a prime guy. Obviously, I've got the 70 to 200. That's a must. The 150 to 600 is also a zoom, but I am a huge prime lens fanatic. I love prime lenses. Can't, can't say how much I love them enough, but I love prime lenses. However, this guy does have autofocus, manual focus, and it also has vibration control, which is stabilization on and off. The 20 mil does not have optical stabilization. It only has autofocus, manual focus. So it being close to 20 mil or a 15 mil, I can also go to 20 mil. Uh, one's stabilized, one's not. One weighs more, one doesn't. There's different reasons why I would choose a lens over another lens. And then coming in here, I just got some basic camera gear. So we got a little puffer. That's for cleaning out lenses inside of camera sensors, mirrors, all kinds of things. I do have a wall mounted battery charger. So when I make my way back to my truck vehicle, wherever I'm at, I could charge some batteries in between trips and then repack and head back out in the bush. I then have one camera flash. So this is a young Nuo flash. It's a YN 600 EX RT2. Uh, I very, very seldomly use flash. I love natural light, but if I do need it, it is there. And that is basically it for the camera bag. I carry uh, a snap-on Allen keys. I should mention this. Uh, tripod legs, they come loose often, especially in ice, rain, heat, cold, water. They come loose. These guys are always in my pocket. Hex keys, just to give them a little tighten up. Uh, they always seem to come loose no matter what. I've been a photographer for over 15 years. I've tried all the tricks. The only trick that works is a hex key. That's it. So I'm going to pack some of this non-essential stuff away, the cleaning kit, uh, the battery charger, some of this stuff away. And we'll talk about tripods, what I'm using for tripods. And then we'll dive more into different aspects, the GoPro, the drone, and we'll dive really deep into what I do and how I set things up and why I do things my way. All right, so the main tripod that I've been using for quite some time now is a carbon fiber tripod as well as my wildlife tripod. They're both identical tripods. The only difference is the head and there's that, that loose tripod leg syndrome we were just talking about. This tripod leg is super loose, needs to be tightened up. Uh, this is a wildlife gimbal. So this allows me to pan and to tilt very long lenses. So the 150 to 600 would go on here. And it's just really nice, silky smooth for really tracking like birds and, and fast moving objects as well as static objects. So this is a carbon fiber tripod. 
probably weighs, I don't know, about 20, 20 pounds with all that stuff on there. Can be a little heavy, a little cumbersome, but it's part of the game. So I'll move that out of the way. This is the exact same tripod. It just has a different head on it. It's a ball head. This is an Interrel N44. And the tripod, if I could find some sticker over here, uh, Interrel Professional Support System RT85C carbon fiber tripod. This is the one I've been using for quite some time, specifically for its height and how many sections of legs it has. It gets up really nice and tall with one center section. Uh, I like getting different angles while I film. That's kind of my thing. I love piecing together films with different angles and different aspects. This is what gets me to do it, as well as my other small tripod, which is on the GoPro right now, which I'll give you guys a quick look at. Okay, so for the smaller tripod that I've been using for quite some time now, it uh, might as well read off the name, uh, K-O-O-L-E-H-A-O-D-A, Kula Hauda, I, I have no idea, guys. It's just off Amazon. Um, it, it does have a ball head on it, so all of my heads that I use on all my tripods and all my mouth, they all have swiveling ball heads. And every camera and every lens that I have is on a quick release plate. So everything is interchangeable. So the GoPro that I'm recording on right now can click on here just like that in seconds. And just to give you guys a look. So when I'm vlogging, uh, not on Lone Wolf 902 as much, but on my other channel, Destination Wilderness, link is in the description. I do carry the camera handheld and I do more of a vlogging style on that channel. Sometimes I use the DSLR. So just to give you guys a look at how this setup can be quite large and cumbersome, I will put on exactly what I use when I'm vlogging with the DSLR, which is my 6D Mark II and my Tamron 15 to 30 mil lens. Get that popped on there. I'll dial it out to 15 mil. Lock it onto the tripod. Very simple, very quick. And that screen that I was telling you guys about, pop it out, swivel it around. Now I can see myself. And there's no microphone on there right now. So keep in mind, there would be the external microphone on top. And this is how I would walk and film. That's a large camera. It's got some weight to it. It's probably in the eight to nine pound range easily. And that's kind of how things are done. So I'd either walk forward with the stabilizer on because this lens is stabilized or I would carry it just like this. Now this does work on the tripod inside of tents as well. And 90% of the time when I'm filming up to this date, that is what is inside of the tent. So whenever I've got the camera inside and I'm filming the hot tent wood stove or getting changed and giving you guys a little bit of a good night message, this is what I'm looking at with the microphone. So just to give you guys an idea real quick, I'm just gonna pop this on here. This is what I have to work with for living space in the tent. And the reason why I'm mentioning this, I have been using the GoPro a lot more in the tent lately, but uh, previous to this video, this is what I've been using. So I'm, I'm kind of dabbling with the GoPro and leaving this in the camera bag a little bit more for inside shots. So in the tent, in the hammock, things of that nature. Uh, and the hammock is a huge game changer with the GoPro because I can actually hand hold it in a very small tight area. This gets, in the way of a lot of things. So people ask all the time, how come you don't bring your backpack inside your tent? How come you don't bring more wood inside of the hot tent for firewood? How come you don't do more cooking inside of the tent? Even though I'm alone camping when I'm on my solo trips, this guy is still with me. This takes up a ton of room. Not only that, I'm moving the camera from here to over here to show different angles. There's no floor space in a tent to do that with a backpack and all that other stuff. And it can get very stressful trying to move camera gear around, clearance for the microphone, not too close to the wood stove, inside the tent, not getting rained on. There's all kinds of things to think about. These legs can't sit on the air mattress because as you move, the camera is gonna move up and down. So it's gonna be planted on solid ground. So there's a lot of thought process to go with this, but this is the second tripod that I use. It does have extendable legs. So I can extend them, one section, two section, all that fun stuff. And it's on a ball head, of course, which makes it extremely easy to dial in whatever angle I'm looking for and to get the shot. So that's tripods. Now I'm gonna pull the chair out, kind of put a few things on the table, talk about the drone a little bit and talk more about how I would pack a bag on a typical overnighter, solo trip, just hiking out, camping, show you guys what I would bring and how I would use that.
All right, so coming over to the table here and taking a look at the drone and drone accessories, what I've been using and some of the frustrations I've had using that. So I am currently using the DJI Air 2S drone. Uh, same size basically as the Mavic 2, which I have here, but uh, we'll open this up real quick, just in case some of you aren't familiar with the drone. Uh, it's not very large. It's, uh, it's actually quite a compact unit, four blades, extremely resilient in high winds i've been finding it works really really well it can power through the rain has it can be a little frustrating though because then you got to clear off the the lens because if you know rain gets on the lens you got to bring it down if you fly up in the clouds you got to bring it down and clean off the lens that's normal stuff the controller is pretty awesome the joysticks are down here put them in there and then pop your cell phone in there for the lcd screen to then fly it um, so this is the air 2s it has a one inch cmos sensor which is a canon sensor excellent quality and these fly automatically this is another thing that uh, someone asked in a comment during a video was the drone is flying itself obviously somebody else is there that's not true these drones are actually programmed with numerous pre-flights so you can set it to an orbit to go all the way around you automatically and other times I'm actually flying it manually, but I'm being very clever, making it look like I'm holding my backpack strap while I've got my thumb on the joystick to drive forwards and film. And then once it goes past me and I'm no longer in the shot, then I can stop and then I can control it from there and do whatever I need to do. So sometimes it's a mix between auto features and a little bit of uh, clever thoughts. So this is the Air 2S. This is the Mavic 2. This was incredible, and I'm a little upset with DJI, not so much with DJI, I'm just upset with it because it stopped working. So the drone itself totally works, everything works with it, I've got the controller, everything to go with it, but it keeps telling me that there's a gimbal motor override, and I've tried everything, and I cannot get the gimbal to stabilize properly. So every time I film with it, it's shaky, and it's just not usable for film to my standard. So I use it as a recon drone. I'll throw it up in the air, go down trails, check out spots instead of driving down or hiking down the trail. Sometimes I'll use this as recon, and I'll use this guy for film work. All right, so little bit of information on the drones there. Now, I'm on the DSLR right now. I do have the GoPro in my hand. So I'm on the 6D Mark II with the 15 mil Tamron at 15 mil. So you guys could definitely see a difference in the quality. Um, now, I am sitting really close to it and uh, didn't really dial in the focus that great. So you guys should be able to see though, it is pretty crispy. Uh, so there are huge benefits and setbacks going from a GoPro to a DSLR. Nothing will ever replace a DSLR in my mind. The lens is what makes the camera. So with this, you lose depth of field, you lose all the creativity of locking your autofocus, just all kinds of things that I get from a DSLR. Being a photographer and a filmmaker, this is the standard. Plain and simple, there's no way around it. So I am rocking the GoPro 10 Black. Uh, I love it. I really do. I just picked this up. I just purchased this probably about a week ago and it's been used in one or two videos so far. Let me know if you guys can pick up what videos it's been used in. So I'm still filming at uh, 4K with this, 1080 with the DSLR. Now my optics quality on my DSLR far surpasses what 1080 can do. And I get asked that all the time. Hey, how do you get good quality at a 1080? It's all in the lens and it's all just knowing how to film, knowing how to set your settings on your camera, knowing how to edit that stuff without damaging the pixels, all that stuff. So it's just time, years of practice. So I am recording 30 frames per second on this at 4K. And I'm just taking this out of the media mod because I just the battery's dead, so I need to swap out a battery. Uh, so this is a GoPro 10 Black with the media mod. So the GoPro itself is very small. So you're gonna pop out this battery, super small batteries. There's that word again, battery. Uh, going filming, photography, all that stuff. You're going to basically have a huge bag full of batteries and all these batteries, they do end up weighing about five pounds, five to six pounds. It's scary. Uh, so I do have the media mod. The media mod allows me to use a separate microphone. It also allows me to actually plug in an external microphone. I have not been using an external mic on this. I've been using just the media mod mic exactly how you see it right here. And I'm actually blown away with it. I love how small it is. I love how compact it is. I love how response 
uh, that how responseful it is. Uh, just everything works really, really well. And it's just one of those cameras that I can whip out and start filming instantly. It's automatic. I don't have to dial in settings, which I'm so used to doing. So sometimes it is worth just kind of, you know, turn it on, record, bam, done. It's also great. I can hand hold it inside of the hammock and give a really good wide angle shot versus using this, which is a giant camera. Sometimes it can be a little cumbersome, but there is definitely definitely a huge noticeable difference between quality on the DSLR and this. Maybe it takes a, a filmmaker and photographer to see that. I know I could pick it out in a second, but these GoPros are definitely not something to turn your nose up to. These can produce very, very stunning images and often really dynamic angles that just can't be ignored. And they're portable. So GoPro Hero 10 Black with the media mod. Uh, we've gone through the drones, the Air 2S, we've gone through the Mavic 2, which is a good drone. It just, I don't know, maybe DJI will reach out to me now that I've made this video and offer to replace my drone. That would be great because the, the gimbal, it won't stabilize. I keep saying that the motors override. And like I said, I've tried everything. It doesn't work. Um, but the Air 2S, that's where the money is at, guys. I love that. So I'm going to grab my camera bag. I'm going to switch back to the GoPro and I'm going to show you guys how I pack a bag. This bag down here. I'm going to show you how I pack this for an overnighter solo hiking and filmmaking. Okay, so we're back on the GoPro right now. And the reason why I switched back to the GoPro is because I want to show everything that I would pack in my carry bag, including the camera body and batteries and things of that nature. Show you guys how it fits. Um, some of these pieces of gear do change. So first off, uh, super wide angle. So this is the Tamron 15 to 30 mil F2.8. Sometimes I will leave this home and I'll actually bring my Rokinon or Samyang 14 mil F1 point, uh, what is this? 2.8 I believe, F2.8. So this is an all manual lens. Clearly there is a big size difference. One's 14 mil prime, meaning it's only 14 millimeters. The other's 15 to 30. Now the zoom doesn't really have much to do with the size, a little bit, but this being a 14 mil lens, it is all manual. The optics on this are incredible. It's not as heavy as the other lens, but there's no autofocus and there's no stabilization. So if I were to end the aperture and zoom or focus, it's all manual, which I love. I love that about this lens. It's so fun to use, but it does not get affected by weather. So if it's really, really going to be pouring with rain, I may leave, even though that this is a professional lens and it is weather sealed, it's very good in the rain. I will often leave that home and rock the 14 millimeter Rokinon slash Samyang. Uh, it's a great lens. It works. This is only about $300, $400. This is about $2,500 Canadian. So huge difference just for a little bit of, um, you know, personal uh, enjoyment and a little ease of mind. I like using the manual lenses, they're fun. So we'll move that out of the way just for a moment. Uh, and much like I said with the 50 mil as well, sometimes I'll bring this really cheap 50 mil lens, which the optics are still really good, uh, but it's a really cheap lens. If that goes in the drink like it has many times and somehow it's still working, uh, I'd rather do that and not lose my F 1.4. I also have a Canon F 1.2, which is a big gigantic 50 mil lens. It's in my truck, not here right now. So I do have three. This is the main guy that I like to use though. So let me get some of these things into the bag. So let's fold the drone legs up. And I'm gonna try and do this in one shot just to show you guys what we're rocking with. First, I might as well mention what I'm gonna bring. So Air 2S drone, we got the drone controller. I then bring three batteries for my drone. So one in the drone plus two extras. And these are great because you can actually press the button and see how much life is in that. So this battery actually is only at 50%. This guy is three quarter percent. Uh, these were just used, so I do have to charge those. I then have three GoPro batteries. There's one in the camera right now and I have two extras here. I will be getting more of these because the GoPro chews batteries like crazy but they're small, they're rather light, they're affordable. So two batteries so far. I carry four batteries in my DSLR. So the DSLR, the Canon 60 Mark II with the battery grip, currently has two batteries inside of it. 
that's generally all I need. Now, if I'm gonna be doing a lot more photography with long exposure, I'm gonna go through batteries. So I bring two more. I can bring six more, I can bring eight more, depending on how long I'm gonna be gone for. Typically, I bring two and two backup, just in case. I've got the hex key tool for the tripod, which is a must. I've got my USB-C cable, which is a must. I also bring a battery bank with me. Now I do have different battery banks, some larger, some smaller in physical size, but they're all basically 26,000 milliamp hours. This is how I charge my stuff, everything that I need to charge. I'll plug that in later on at night, let it do its thing. I carry a ND filter. So this is a variable ND. This is for filming with my 50 mil lens. I love shooting at f2.8. And anyone who knows cameras, filming 30 frames per second in the broad daylight at f2.8 is impossible. The exposure will be ruined, so I use the ND filter to dial in my exposure. I then have my Comica microphone, and I'm not sure... So this is Comica V30 Lite. Uh, I use two of these, so I keep one in my bag at all times as a spare, and this basically lives on my camera. For the GoPro, I just use the media mod. That is it. So. Drone, DSLR, typically two lenses, and the GoPro 10. Now, I would bring different lenses if I were doing different things on that trip. So if I had a very long landscape and I wanted to close the gap, maybe there's a river there and I couldn't get the camera closer, then I would bring my DSLR. I might bring a second body, I doubt it, but I'd probably bring the 70 to 200. So I'd pack the 70 to 200 in the bag, just to close the gap when there's physical distances that can't be closed. So if I'm on the edge of a cliff and I want the frame to be larger, I might dial it at 70, I might dial it all the way to 200 mil. And on the very, 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 very rare occasion when I'm doing film work and I really need to close the gap because I know there's gonna be a physical gap, I'll bring the 150 to 600 to really close the gap. Now, this guy works incredibly well. The problem with bringing really large lenses is any tiny little bit of wind and shake in the tripod is going to be exponentially magnified with a long lens much rather than a wide angle lens so the tripod needs to be super secure hanging the bag underneath the tripod to add weight is always a must and a little trick that i use for recording in wind is i'll have a toque so often i have a hat with me i'll put that over my microphone to even more block the wind just because these these work really great but sometimes the wind's so strong on the coast and up in the mountains that it really won't matter so i'll put my hat over top of here to actually help out quite a bit more so all that information aside let's get it in the bag <clears throat> so Hopefully you guys can see down here. I have the bag separated in two compartments. Typically what I would do is, <laughs> it's gonna be a gong show. So I will go with the camera body, no lens on it. I'm just gonna drop that straight in. I will then go for the 15 to 30. And the reason why when I'm traveling, I don't put the lens on because I'm not sure what lens I'm gonna need and when I'm gonna need it. But when I'm hiking, obviously I have one lens on the camera body, on the tripod, over my shoulder, walking. If I need to stop to get a certain shot, I literally hide my camera bag off camera and move every piece of production equipment off camera. And then I'll get the shot and then I'll go all the way back and get the camera geared just the way I am. So I'll put the wide angle in there. Uh, we'll go with the drone next. I put the drone straight in on the bottom. I then go with the controller. Typically I'll put this in my pocket, but I'm gonna put it all in the bag so you guys can see how everything fits. Uh, we'll go with the 50 mil. We'll slide that right down into that little nook. And I think that's basically it. The microphone, we'll pop that over there. I'll go with the ND filter, drop that in there, cable. And then I just kind of tuck that in there to hold it all in. That zips shut. In the top compartment, I literally just throw batteries in there. So the GoPro goes in here as well. It actually fits in there. The two drone batteries fit in here. My cell phone slides right in here. So when I need my cell phone for the drone controller, it's right there. GoPro batteries, two or three, toss them in. Hex keys always in my pocket, but you know what? It'll fit in there right now, so I just put it in. Battery bank typically goes in my backpack, but this entire compartment here, I've got loads of room in there. So I could jam that in there. I could throw in another lens. Typically I'll put the tripod in there, cram that all the way in there, or I'll carry it in my other backpack. Uh, but that's pretty much it. I'm just looking around just to make sure 
everything's there. So that right there, that's the bag that I bring with me. And I wear this around my neck just like this. And when I'm walking and not filming, I have the tripod and the full DSLR kit laying straight across just like this. And my backpack on my back and just hiking. I'll find a suitable spot. I'll plant the tripod, drop the bag. And depending on what type of shot it is, if I'm walking to the camera, that means I have to walk away from the camera, stop, turn around, and then start walking in the actual keepable shot. So there is a lot of behind the scenes stuff that I may do in the future if you guys are interested in how to create a film. Um, yeah, we might do that. But this video, I just wanted to cover the filming and production gear that I do use and how I would use it, when I would use it, why I chose certain things. Uh, I think I covered a lot of that information in the video. If I did forget something, just drop it down in the comment section and feel free to ask. Uh, and that's pretty much it. But typically what I like to do is bring the DSLR, two lenses, a prime 50 mil and a super wide. So I like the 15 to 30 mil because if I need a, not a super wide shot, but I need something cropped in a little bit and I don't want to switch to the 50 just because it takes time, I'll dial the 15 to 30 into 30 mil and I'll physically move it a little bit closer and I'll capture that shot. Now that doesn't work if it's in sunshine because the 15 to 30 does not have a filter ring to put an ND filter on. So then you really need to think about how is the shot going to get taken. Sometimes you just got to put in the work. Me being a photographer and a filmmaker, removing lenses is like unbearable. Okay, so some people watch me film, they go, oh, you just swapped to a 50 mil to get you pouring coffee in a cup and then back out to the 70 to 200, back up, get that shot. And then switch to a 15 to 30 mil two seconds later to get the inside shot. So it's change, change, change. That for me is the fun. That's why I'm a filmmaker. Building these films, building these experiences is what it's all about for me. I'm not a bushcraft channel. I'm not a how-to channel. I'm an experience channel. I wanna bring you and make you feel like you're there with me. And that's where all this comes into play. So. Hopefully that gave you guys some insight as to what I use for filming. This is my profession, what I do for a living. I am a photographer and filmmaker. So hopefully this helps you guys out. Now I will say if you were to get started in making YouTube videos, what would I personally recommend to everybody? The GoPro. Go with the GoPro 10 Black as of right now during filming time. It is an excellent camera to just go and shoot, turn it on, hit record, off you go. Get the media mod with it because it's definitely worth it. Now, if you're going for a DSLR setup, what would I recommend? I would recommend the Comica V30 mic. I have three or four of these, but right now I have two that I know where they are. These are extremely resilient. They work really well. The audio is super crispy. So I would go with that mic. I would go with the Canon 6D Mark II. Camera body, it's full frame, it's got the swivel screen, super, super easy to operate. I film everything in manual mode, so I set my own ISO, my own aperture, my own focal point, I lock the focus, I never use autofocus. Um, everything's planned on a tripod, so all those settings, even the white balance, everything gets dialed in before I ever hit record. If you're at that level, go with the DSLR. If you're learning, just go with the DSLR. You're only gonna learn if you get it. So. I would go with that, and then I would recommend the Canon 51.8 if you're just getting started. It's a cheap lens. It has extremely good optics for how cheap it is. Um, I think every photographer will speak good of these crap lenses because they are at the bottom of the barrel, but they perform so well. And if you drop it in the water or it gets broken, who cares? It's $169 versus my other 50 mil, which is five, 600, and then my other 50 mil, which is like $2,500. $169, I would drop this in the ocean any day, and I have many times. Uh, and for a wide angle, look at Samyang and Rokinon, all manual lenses. Uh, very, very affordable. So that's what I would recommend. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop it down below, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.